So from my perspective, as tragic as they are, human-shark interactions are, are so rare that it doesn't really make sense to take sorts of actions that can have serious implications on the populations of the sharks, which we know uh, are important for the health of our marine habitats. Um, you know, I think more than anything, they're, they're implemented to make people feel more comfortable. They don't necessarily make people actually safer. Um, so I don't think that they're a necessary precaution. So current uh, shark control programs, they, they use beach nets and, and drum lines. Um, and to me, uh, I think that's, that's something that we have to uh, consider an alternative. These lead to substantial mortality and localized mortality. And it's not just on sharks, but it's on a wide variety of marine organisms. I think some of the more traditional measures for shark control are exactly that. They're outdated, traditional, and knowing what we know now about the status of lots of sharks, especially the top apex predatory animals that are large and really slow growing, lethal removals is not smart and not the right answer. It just doesn't make sense from a logistical standpoint. Shark nets and drum lines are definitely the wrong answer because the removal of large predators is devastating to any ecosystem. There's also no proof that these methods are actually effective at preventing shark bites on people anyway. So I think that the uh, sort of original implementation of what we call traditional means of shark medication were probably brought about at a time when people had very different attitudes toward sharks. So it, there wasn't concern about um, having uh, lethal mo modes of, of uh, mitigating shark interactions. Um, but now, attitudes have changed quite a bit. and. So I feel there's a sort of a more public support for these non-lethal methods, but I also think that you have to consider that whenever you enter a wildlife situation, you're entering another animal's home. So you have to take, you have to assume a certain level of risk. Um, there are lots of other alternatives out there that we can do that will actually help solve this issue. Uh, in a much more effective and conservation-minded mentality. And for the past seven years, I've been looking for alternative strategies uh, to maximize uh, bather protection at beaches, uh, non-invasive strategies. And so something that we're looking at right now uh, is something called the shark safe barrier. It's something that integrates uh, magnetic technology with visual stimuli and we've had some success with it. Shark repellents can not only protect people but sharks as well by driving them away from areas where they are likely to be killed by humans in which case shark repellents may actually serve as an effective conservation tool as well as public safety devices. However, I don't think it's going to be a question of a single device being the answer. Sharks are very complex animals with a battery of senses and we're going to need to use a range of different strategies to prevent negative interactions with people. More often than not, I feel like certain shark mitigation uh, measures are simply sort of a placebo for people so they feel safe. There's been a lot of success in places like Western South Africa using shark spotting programs that actually employ people from the local community, give them income and a job. And they also give them a foot in local uh, marine conservation stewardship. And the shark spotting programs have given local communities great peace of mind. It has helped educate the community about the importance of shark conservation. And it's had a positive impact. And this is a very low cost, um, very easy strategy that does not going to cost the government a lot of money and really result in a lot of, of outcry from the conservation and advocacy groups. Well, once again, I think it comes down to the fact that the negative shark-human interactions are, are so rare that I don't think those sorts of programs are necessary. I think they actually end up being quite expensive and not necessarily worth you know, the public funds that go into them. Shark control programs do not have to be lethal to be effective. A new approach to shark control recently trialed in Brazil involves capturing, transporting and releasing large sharks offshore, whilst also providing an opportunity to tag and monitor the individual's caught. This approach has been extremely effective in reducing the incidence of shark bites in protected areas, but without the indiscriminate killing of sharks and other marine life. So if um, certain programs are done correctly, we can get lots of information about life history and things like that we don't really have great access to. So um, there's a potential to sort of get two benefits out of it. Sort of the peace of mind for people, some level of protection, and also data that we wouldn't normally get access to.
there are hundreds of really smart, innovative scientists and engineers from all over the world that would be very excited to work with places like the Western Australian government to help control this issue and get a handle on it in a sustainable way that's also safe for people. So I would urge the government to actually reach out to those scientists and listen to the people who are, are talking because these people want to make it better for everybody. I was born in Perth, so I've lived there pretty much my whole life, so I understand the issues and I understand the recent tragedies that have occurred and I understand that they've gone ahead and put um, drum lines out and I don't agree with it. I think there's other measures that can be taken such as some of these plastic beach enclosures and I know there are similar enclosures elsewhere in the world that people have an option to swim safely. Those enclosures however are never going to stop divers out in the open ocean chasing crayfish or spearfish and all surfers getting attacked. I encourage the WA government to adopt fisheries managed non-lethal shark control measures that will not only reduce the risk of negative shark encounters but will also bolster research opportunities for tagging and monitoring of sharks in WA which will ultimately reveal the answer as to how we coexist safely with these important animals. I've lived in places, I've lived in Perth for a short time, I've lived in Northern California where there are um, large species of shark that you, ha you have to be aware of. Um, and as someone brought up earlier, people are becoming more and more intelligent about ways to reduce the risk when they go into the ocean. But you always have to understand that when you go somewhere that is not your home um, or is home to something else, then uh, you do assume a certain level of risk. And it is sort of um, something that we shouldn't take for granted, but we should also understand and respect the, uh, the natural world around us. Sharks are incredibly important, and we need to learn to live with them rather than try to remove them. Education is really the key to allowing us to enjoy the ocean safely without the need for any of these destructive control measures. I mean, I understand where some people are coming from this issue and wanting to be safe and wanting to enjoy the habitat, but the most important and really obvious thing to remember is that the ocean does not belong to us, even though we may think it does. Uh, it belongs to the creatures that live out there, so anytime we engage in that ecosystem we're taking a risk and that's somehow been forgotten I think in some of the, the strategies for this the, you know the mentality for humans on this planet is hack and slash and burn and uh, then all of a sudden 20 years later you realize that there's a big problem and there's a lot of things missing from the ecosystem that used to be there so I think that uh, it would be really smart for the Western uh, Australian government to, to listen to the scientists and really they want to help uh, and I think that's the best strategy moving forward